What's going on, NMO fans? This is your host, Alex Lexus of the NMO Mugen Arcade TV show. Um, just coming at you with a solo video, which hasn't been done in a while, because the emphasis was more on the new presentation with the podcast, which is a little more interactive, getting more people involved with the show, uh, audience members who want to get in with fighting game league you know like we've been doing jojo's adventure streams persona 4 streams and uh ultimate marvel so that kind of stuff has been the focus because we're getting new types of uh audience members which is the you know the target of the show to expand and grow with uh new members so i just wanted to you know Focus more on that, but, you know, the root of the show, trying to get back to our little news reporting here. But, I just wanted to also inform you guys that there's going to be a major fighting game tournament uh, under the KOTC umbrella on September 22nd. I'm actually competing in that tournament, and hopefully the tournament organizers will have uh, the DLC characters, since now my other half or my, my Blanca with the, the, the dislocked character is now out for release. I've been doing a lot better with Cross Tekken so we shall see how that pans out um, coming up next month. So make sure you support KOTC Nation. Mr. Rod Lane just giving you a shout out and you know the, the new guys who took over in Animal's absence who are running uh, the fighting game tournaments with KOTC Nation. Good luck to you. They got all our my support. If ever they need anything, I got their back. So make sure you go out there and check them out. All right. So why am I doing this video? Several reasons. There's a couple of topics that have uh, come to my attention, and I just wanted to kind of go over them. And uh, but let me pull up my notes. For those of you who care, Bayonetta Two is not canceled. Apparently. I guess the, the creators at Platinum Games said that they, it still has life to it. I love that game. The, the Bayonetta, the original, phenomenal game. And hopefully, if Bayonetta 2 comes out sometime next year, that will actually show Ninja Theory how an action game should be done. But then again, we'll see how this Devil May Cry reboot... I don't want to be a dead horse, but I'd rather not talk about it now. I'd rather do that on the live podcast when uh, we do have it scheduled. But, the economy. How has the economy affected the video game industry? Now, I don't know if any of the, uh, the other YouTube shows have ad addressed this, but now having taken how, you know, financial you know, ruts have been hitting companies, uh, major corporations, it's just now I'm beginning to see something that I almost, I would have to say, I have to apologize to some of these companies for certain things that I said, but not everything. And what I mean by that is, nowadays, okay, in the United States, you know, the economy is not where it used to be, all right? And you got now a lot more people being a little more conservative with what they they pay for. Granted, so now you got, okay, for instance, let's say, let me bring a good example. You got a company like Capcom who are running around forcing gems on a game called Street Fighter Cross Tekken. You might have heard of it. And they're charging you for gems and power-ups and all this other stuff. And with the economy the way it is, you got some people who are unwilling to purchase this stuff. Because it's like, man, you know, it's like they're nickel and diming me to, to, you know, to offset whatever financial setbacks they may be suffering. And with that, you know, you got the companies themselves, they may be hit by the economy too. So they have to charge the customers for every little thing that they can to stay afloat. So, what does this mean? It's a vicious cycle that, that just got set into motion that 
it's like how do we 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 fix it? I don't know if we can at at our level, but I just know that it, it's an ugly situation where you know a lot of people aren't working and but they want to play the games and they don't want to feel like they're being robbed either, you know. So it's like okay. The companies may not be doing well. They have to nickel and dime you for every little thing that they can get. It's just, wow, what do you do? Let me know what you guys think because I know that's an important topic because the economy has a, a, a vast impact on how the video game industry is going to be dealing with future future games. And, and consider the fact that they want to survive. We don't want some of these companies to, to tank or go under. So we want to support them, but, you know, they have to know where the line is because some people are just very reluctant these days. These are hard times. So the last thing anybody wants to do, and, and Harada, uh, producer of, uh, uh, of the Tekken series with Namco, he has the right idea, the right framework in mind where, hey, I'm going to give you free DLC, free this, free that. You're going to push more units that way because it's like, man, you know what? Hell, I wasn't a big Tekken guy because of my uh, issues with Tekken 6. And once you get lifted, bam, 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 like, you know, juggle combos to the end. But considering that the guy is going to be offering, and, well, uh, not just Harada, but... Team Namco is going to be offering all this enriching content to um, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. That's something you would, you know, for someone like me, I would definitely support them. I would want that company to thrive. And I would, you know, kind of say, hey, you know, word of mouth, say, hey, you know, go get that game. And they do well, hey, then they can put out another one. You know, there's a way to do it. And I guess Capcom showed the world how not to do it. But it's just, the economy has a, a, a vast impact. Now, look what happened with Nintendo Power. I will tell you this, and without giving away my age, but I remember when Nintendo Power really started coming into its own. And in grade school, Nintendo Power was like, awesome. Hey, did you get the, 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 the latest issue of Nintendo Power? Oh, my God, they got this stuff on Zelda and Mario and Kung Fu and all that. And now... I went on um, uh, on <laughs> the Magic Box and I, and Nintendo Power December of this year their last issue their their last issues go out and that that's that's a sad thing considering how Nintendo Power for me as a kid growing up was it's like man they they gave some cool articles in there you know I mean that would I think Nintendo Power and Game Pro were the first magazines that really got me into looking at the gaming industry a little bit differently. And it's just sad to hear that they're meeting their demise or they're coming to the end. So it's just, wow. Fi the whole financial structure somewhere when the economy in the United States start getting sh shaken up, the ripple effects all over the world seem to really make... Uh, you know, segue, because it's just, wow. I mean, I really feel bad hearing that. Even though I grew away from Nintendo over the years, it's just, damn, it, the reality is hitting that times have changed. Things are changing. And maybe it would have been cool if Nintendo did Nintendo Power as a digital format or possibly like a website. I'm pretty sure they have something in the works with that. But, um, you know, again, I haven't been really keeping tabs on Nintendo for years in that re regard. Like, I used to be a big supporter. And I was like, Kura Nintendo. But, you know, the content, I just outgrew it. But, I mean, also, like with certain gaming studios, like, um, I know I heard some rumors about the studio that created Prototype 2 and how it didn't sell to expectations. They're about to close. Look what happened to the company that produced Two Human, you know. And I mean, you know, I believe there's a, a studio. Uh, what was that Liverpool, S C E A? That uh, the the guys that created uh, Wipeout, I think they were called Signos or something. I can't remember. 
but they're shutting down. It's like, wow, you know, what's what's gonna happen to our gaming industry? Like, what kind of transformations are they gonna? It, it will they have to undertake to keep it going? You know, it'd be interesting to see. But let me know what you guys think on that particular topic because it's just wow that that can really hurt down the long run and I guess the new generation of gamers won't really understand. They'll t kind of take it for granted. And I'm not trying to say that to insult any of you uh, viewers. It's just that, okay, some of us who grew up in the gaming industry in its infancy, that w we would hate to see things take a drastic change. So I just wanted to say my two cents on that. Leave video comments below. Moving on to the next topic. Those of you who haven't played Persona 4, get that freaking game. It's awesome. Good stuff. Atlas, Arc System Work. To me, the game is like a cross between JoJo's Adventure and Guilty Gear. It is really... Nelson and I will attack that on a uh, future podcast because we're still trying to break the game a little bit. And, you know, I, I hope that they do more tournaments with it because I can actually get behind that game. For various reasons. The system is balanced. Even though I saw, saw some crazy combos in there. But if you do get caught in long combos. That's because you aren't looking at the combo meter. Where it flashes different colors. To tell you when you can escape. When you can block or do your burst meter. And all that. I mean very good. Very solid game. Unlike Marvel 3 and Street Fighter Cross 2nd. But that's a whole other story. But my last topic before... Uh, I shut down this mini short is my thoughts on Street Fighter Cross Tekken and here's and I know I keep revisiting this but I would have to say this came on the heels of the announcement that it won't be at EVO 2013 now Desk made a good point the game even though there's a lot of problems with it I, I will give the R&D team credit for making attempts to fix the game, okay? It would be one thing if they left it at version 1.4 something or 1.04 with fucked up shit in it. But I, I see the consistent effort to try and fix the game. However, the effort is one thing, but listening to the fans is another fucking thing. So, I would say this. I believe the game can be saved. And the reason why is ever since the disc, disc lock content has been released to the public, I've, I've seen new life in the game. I see more possibilities. You have uh, 12 more characters that should have been out there from the beginning. That might have helped because it's sad to see Street Fighter Cross Tekken brand new out of Walmart or one of these uh, spots here in New Jersey, you know, for 20 bucks, brand new game. <laughs> I mean, that that tells you something wasn't done properly on Capcom side. But that's neither here nor there. We already beat the dead horse with it. But, you know, characters like Lars, Cody, Guy, Sakura, Brian, Jack. I mean, having them added to the roster kind of like it, it did breathe new life into the game, you know. And to not see them on the EVO stage, that is, is kind of like, is, it, it is Capcom's fault for doing it the way that they were doing it before. But there's a lot more to the game. And maybe I have to renege on a lot of the things that I said in terms of um, with, with the game. But the DLC, I think, is, is somewhat helping the game in terms of, with, with, with me, in my eyes, it's, it's like, okay, you got new content or dislock content finally released to us, and I actually like the characters. They're, they're not bad at all. So, it might be a little bit premature. I mean, if we see at, at EVO 2013... Without the two-on-two -two format, because I think that kind of messed it up too. It should just be one-on-one, -on -one and then you have a separate two-on-two, -two or whatever. But I guess the game with the hype, the hype killer is that timer. That timer, you know, like I have in my notes. The timer 
just slow it down and or stop it during supers. The timeouts, unacceptable. Because you saw how shitty it looked at EVO. Capcom, please listen. Please, please, please. I know I've been ripping y'all a new one, but... If I didn't give it, if I didn't care about the game, I wouldn't even be saying shit about it. I would be like, hey, whatever. I see too much potential in cross Tekken. There's just these fine tweaking it. And Demizzo said a lot of things with having to shine up a shit turd. To a degree, yes. But if you just listen, slow down the timer, and stop it on supers, you're fine. You know, you'll you'll have less timeouts with that. Also. Pandora, Shinoir and I really were sitting in um, the in the briefing room, and we were playing around with Pandora. And then the night before, I was playing Ultimate Marvel on the Fighting Game League stream, where I said to myself, you know, as much as I hate X Factor, it was done in a way where, okay, yeah, it's a comeback mechanic, but it actually works. You know what I mean? It actually works. It's useful. Pandora is not useful, so it should kind of be more X-Factor like. And what I mean by this is, okay, let's say somebody activates Pandora. You lose a partner, fine. That should be penalty one. Okay, you use Pandora, you sacrifice your teammate, and now you got a boost for your character for, what, for the short duration of time. Okay? But to save, to save that m mode... They should make it so it doesn't kill you. It should just wear off. You already killed your partner. And then it's like, oh man, you know, now I'm fucked. I got to fight by myself. You know what I mean? So it's, it make it more of a gamble, but make people want to use the mode. So now you have Pandora. Adjust it so that it doesn't kill the person or cause a time over. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, it might help that, 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 that feature. I don't know. Did anybody else think of this? Maybe let me know what your thoughts are on that. But I would I would use Pandora more knowing that it wasn't going to force a timeout when the meter was over. You saw the video that I put up where I'm using Lily and the freaking time just disappeared on me. Or the meter disappeared thus forcing the timeout. Time out. And I'm like, wow. Why is this mode in the game? If you fix that, I think you'll be okay. I really am trying to take a different approach and not be so rage, rage, full of rage with that because the game has potential to, to, to be okay. Moving on to my next set of notes. I know that um, the block stun, still work on it, bottom line. Some people get locked up and it's just block stun, fix it. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. So... With the whole thing, we're trying to make it X Factor like. Hmm. I don't know. It just that Pandora mode. I think if adjusted properly, it, it might work. So you guys, let me know what you think. I want to take this time out to say 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 a shout out to Nelson, Shinwar, the rest of the Animal staff. Thank you for your devout support. Whenever I need you guys, you got my back. Uh, to Mr. Rod Lane, thank you for uh, inviting me to come to the events and just plugging, making sure that you guys go September 22nd at the Hyatt in Marshtown, New Jersey. Uh, I believe it starts around 10 o'clock, but you might want to get there earlier for casuals. Uh, myself, Shinwar, and a couple other people should be in attendance. I probably have my video camera this time to see how things work out. So, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns... If you want to get in on our next podcast, I'm going to start posting the dates that we do the podcast um, on our Facebook page so that uh, this way, you know, it, it's we're not scrambling to get people at the last minute. So uh, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that we improve based on your feedback. We fix the sound issue on, on the stream. So those of you who want to get on our, our podcast and the fighting open lobby streams, Make sure you download Ubu so you can actually talk to us and we'll actually put your face in the Versus screen like me and Nelson have been doing. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you think on the topics covered today. Please su support Animo. We really need it. 
uh, because uh, we're trying to make sure that we don't lose our accreditation with Comic Con this year. So they gotta see that we're legit. Make sure you check out Fighting Game League, Tough Nerd Toys, the name. Shout out to everybody. It's good to be back on the solo show. Next time you'll see us on the podcast. So this is Alex Alexis. I will see you next time on the Animal Megan Arcade Show. Peace.